Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Dave, and I'm so glad that you've joined me today. And as you can tell, I'm coming to you from uh, right from my office today. Uh, I want to encourage you to, to go to our website, hcfumc.weebly.com, and click on the Connect With Us button just to let us know that you're watching. And if you have a prayer request that I can be lifting up in prayer, uh, click that prayer request button, and I'll be glad to keep your uh, prayer request before the Lord. Let's spend some time and worship together. Oh Lord, we pray, open our lips and purify our hearts that we may worthily lift up your holy name. Help us to reverence you in thought, word, and action, and to worship you now and always in the faith and spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lamentations 3, 25 and 26 tells us, The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the person who seeks him. It's good to wait in silence for the Lord's deliverance. Lord God, we are so grateful for your blessings to us every day and, and for your willingness and your longing to deliver us as well. We're encouraged by your care and your guidance along our journey. And Lord, we want to be more like Jesus. We want to follow in his steps. We want to be and, and do those things that demonstrate your love to all the world around us. We praise you, Lord, for we know that you always hear and answer those prayers that we lift up to you. We carry um, many joys and concerns in our hearts, and Lord, we offer to them to you in this moment. We're grateful that when we cannot express our concerns, your Holy Spirit within us cries out to you on our behalf because the Spirit knows how to pray for us. Lord, we know that there's nothing you can't do. You are limitless in your ability to heal every disease and to provide for every need. And so we lift ourselves and, and those that we care about up to you, uh, knowing that, that you love them, that you care for them, that, that you can heal them. Would you do that today? Would you bring wholeness into their lives, regardless of their need? We humbly offer ourselves to you as well, knowing that through faith you are working out your plan for each one of us. We are grateful, Lord, beyond words, except to offer our voices together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And Lord, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God is generous in providing for our needs. We have an opportunity now to offer thanks to God through our own generosity as we together provide for the needs and ministry opportunities that we discover around us. As you continue your generosity and your faithfulness in giving as God directs you, I, I know that God will bless you abundantly. You cannot outgive God in everything that you give <laughs> out of love for God whether you are giving it to the church or to an, uh, a, a helping organization or whether you're giving it to an individual, God will bless you even as you bless them. Of course, you can continue to mail in your offerings to Hollyton or Conklin Forks United Methodist Churches. You can find those addresses on our website. But you can also give to Hollyton United Methodist Church online from our webpage, hcfumc.weebly.com slash giving. As we offer our gifts today, let, let us take a moment and pray. 
Almighty and merciful God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. We give you praise and thanks for all your mercies. We, Lord, thank you for your goodness in creating us, and your bounty has sustained us. You've given so much to and for us, O oh God. We now offer our gifts in return, and we pray that as we give ourselves to your service, that, that, that you would help us, that you would empower us as we cheerfully submit in all things to your blessed will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm a slow reader. I enjoy reading, but it takes me a long time to read a book. In fact, I, I've read so many books because I've had to for my pastoral training. And, and I have had little opportunity to read just for fun. But one thing I've always had going for me in reading is good comprehension. At least I used to have that. <laughs> I could read a book and I could tell you all about it. But I am not as good a listener. I'm easily distracted by the tasks at hand that I often miss details of what I hear. I, I've told Jenny, if she wants to communicate with me, but the TV is on, she needs to get between me and the TV. And even if I'm taking notes, I, I can get so bound up in the note taking that I miss the details. Even if I catch the details to write them down, I, I'm not likely to be able to tell you what I just wrote. You know, actually, we could get into quite a discussion over the nuanced differences between listening and hearing. Sometimes I hear, but I don't listen. Other times I listen, but can't tell what I'm hearing. I think you understand what I mean. Anyway, my comprehension is much lower for listening than for reading. Verbal instruction can sometimes get lost on me. I do much better with print than with audible. Don't we all struggle with this? Don't we all lose details in the hearing? It doesn't have to be that way. It takes practice. It takes work. But we can all be better listeners, better hearers. Joshua has had decades of experience with listening. Moses, his mentor, would often give Joshua specific instructions to follow. And Joshua followed them successfully. Now Moses was gone. And Joshua faced a new challenge. Jericho. Jericho was a fortified city. Its walls were strong and secure. It protected its people from attack and gave also a good vantage point from which to defend themselves and to fight. Israel was a weak people and in a weak position. They were outside the city walls looking to get in. <laughs> Taking Jericho would be no simple matter to overcome. Today, we read from Joshua 6, 1 through 20, to see what Joshua did after humbling himself in worship. Hear the word of the Lord, and may God add blessing to the hearing. Now, Jericho, Jericho was closed up tightly because of the Israelites. No one went out or came in. The Lord said to Joshua, Look, I have given Jericho its king and its king into your power, along with its mighty warriors. Circle the city with all the soldiers, going around the city one time. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven trumpets made from ram's horns in front of the chest. On the seventh day, circle the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets and have them blow a long blast on the ram's horn. As soon as you hear that trumpet blast, have all the people shout out a loud war cry. Then the city will collapse, and the people will rise up, attacking straight ahead. So Joshua, Nun's son, 
called the priests. He said to them, Lift up the covenant chest. Let seven priests carry seven trumpets made from ram's horns in front of the Lord's chest. He said to the people, Go forward, circle the city. Let the armed soldiers go in front of the Lord's chest. As soon as Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests came carrying seven ram's horns, moved forward in front of the Lord. They blew the trumpets. The Lord's covenant chest followed. The initial group of soldiers was going in front of the priests who were blowing the trumpets. The rear guard was coming behind the chest with trumpets blowing continuously. Joshua ordered the people, Don't shout. Don't let your voice be heard. Don't let a word come out of your mouth until the day I tell you, shout. Then, shout. He made the Lord's chest circle of the city, going around one time. They went back to the camp and stayed there overnight. Joshua got up early in the morning. The priests lifted up the Lord's chests. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets made the ram's horns, made from ram's horns, were going in front of the Lord's chest, blowing trumpets continuously. The armed soldiers were going in front of them. The rear guard was coming after the Lord's chest, blowing trumpets continuously. They circled the city one time on the second day. Then they went back to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at dawn. They circled the city in this way seven times. It was only on that day that they circled the city seven times. The seventh time, the priests blew the trumpets. Then Joshua said to the people, Shout, because the Lord has given you the city. The city and everything in it is to be utterly wiped out as something reserved for the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute is to stay alive, along with everyone with her in her house. This is because she hid the messengers we sent. But you, keep away from the things set aside for God so that you don't desire and take some of the things reserved. That would turn the camp of Israel into a thing doomed to be utterly wiped out and bring calamity on it. All silver and gold, along with bronze and iron equipment, are holy to the Lord. They must go into the Lord's treasury. Then the people shouted. They blew the trumpets. As soon as the people heard the trumpet blast, they shouted a loud war cry. The wall collapsed. The people went up against the city, attacking straight ahead. They captured the city. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Five things, five things stand out as we examine this text. These five things can move us and our church to new levels of faithfulness and success in life and ministry. So let's dive in. In verse 2, we discover that God spoke clearly and specifically to Joshua. No one else was around. Now, it was common in Old Testament stories for God to appear as his own messenger, though sometimes God sent specific angels. You remember from last week that Joshua had encountered an armed man who was ready for battle. That man is the Lord in our text today. God required Joshua's close attention. Look, God said. <laughs> Pay attention was the effect. And this gave Joshua a heads up that God was about to tell him something very important. Just that one word, look. Then God gave Joshua specific instructions in verses 3 through 5. The battle plan seems ridiculous at first, but when considered further, it's really a brilliant plan. It can be interpreted in terms of guerrilla tactics, where feint and deception, display, discipline, and surprise can go a long way toward 
compensating for a weak position, that of, the, of a tribal force facing a well-armed and sealed fortress town. God was having Joshua lead the army of Israel in such a way that they would psych out the people of Jericho. There's also a significant theological point to all of this. Israel cannot fight without God's help. God, instead, makes up for Israel's weakness, saying, I have given Jericho and its kings into your power. The tactics for bringing Jericho down include blowing horns, marching in formation, rallying together, shouting, and charging. And other than charging, all of these acts are also liturgical, worshipful acts. Think about that. And along with that, God's instruction was that everything in Jericho was to be set apart as holy to the Lord. This is church today. Blowing of horns, marching in formation, rallying together, shouting, and and setting apart the things, our surroundings, as holy to the Lord. Mm. Joshua then relays carefully God's instructions to all the people in detail. We find this in verses 6 and 7, verses 10 and 16 to 19. Communication from God to Joshua and from Joshua to the people was successful. The details were effectively passed along. It makes me think, makes me think. Why do we have such trouble with communication today? Hmm. Anyway, the people then followed Joshua's specific instructions. And total success of the operation was the result. Will you listen to God today? Will you hear God say to you, Look! Will you understand that you are about to hear something very important? You see, God is about to give specific instruction. Get ready. God wants to speak to you. His woman, his man, his child, his church. God has something for you to do that will lead his church to new influence, new impact on our community. Will you share what you hear with us? Will you carry it out in your life and ministry down to the detail? You know, as we face our Jericho challenge today, we face great obstacles in our ministry. COVID has changed so many things. People's hearts fail in fear. The medical system in New York is experiencing the loss of essential workers because of the vaccine mandate. We are on the very edge of martial law in New York as a result. The governor is sending in troops to the hospitals to, to uh, back up any positions that are lost. On top of that, people don't just don't walk in the church doors anymore. Even some regular church people are not returning to worship yet due to this great pandemic we continue suffering. Jericho's walls are are high and strong, and it appears nothing can tear them down. Yet, we are called to bring down the walls of our Jericho and transform our community. We cannot do it alone, though. We must listen. We must hear God's plan. We must communicate that plan accurately and execute it fully. Only then will God fight for us, bringing the walls down and giving us success. Are we ready? Let's pray. You have shown us, O Lord, what is good. Enable us now, we pray, to to do what you require, even to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. You, O Lord God, we will serve, and your voice we will obey. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the presence of God the Creator give you strength. May the presence of God the Redeemer give you peace. 
May the presence of God, the sanctifier, give you 